the Wednesday Drawing Show. Oh, I keep waiting for. Uh, I should have a little thing. Got, uh, no, and I had. We we went, we went through sound effects last week, didn't we? So what would happen at the? <laughs> I should have a. I should. Uh, Judy, can you make a note for me, please? Judy, shall we bring Judy in? <laughs> Hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. <laughs> Judy, there wow. you are. No, let's bring you in on that. There we, we are. <laughs> Uh, here's Judy. Uh, welcome to the Wednesday Joy Show, February the 24th, 2000. No, it's 2001. Oh, my goodness. Look at that. 2001? <laughs> 20 years behind. There we go. 2021. <laughs> no, we don't. No, hang on. That's 21, isn't it? Yeah, so where are we? No, we want to be. Let me zoom. Yeah. Here we are. We're still learning, aren't we? Yes. <laughs> and uh and you might like the new kind of colorway scheme because i thought the other one was a bit kind of a bit too much like wasps so <laughs> <laughs> coming into attack or mm. there were too many too much black and yellow wasn't it so there we are hey bobby heron and hey, um uh, hey Yay. gabriel how are you cat Cal Cal and how are your kids hope they're all right <laughs> everybody octavia uh, b in romania can't wait hello 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 how are you all doing trails better that's good oh yeah and trails trails tm um says uh i'm better now been a rough ride but getting better trails was actually it's about a month ago maybe was actually going down with covid but hanging on to the end of the show <laughs> they didn't want to miss it and has not been well since so i hope you're getting so much better and uh karina is there hi karina how are you Ooh. We have great, great news from Karina this week. Karina has made her first international sale with a drawing of a lemon tree. So hang on, wait a minute. Hang on, where, where, where? Yes. Woo! Yay! <laughs> Hold on, Karina. Hola. <laughs> and, uh, we've got Karen McMillan from Delaware. All, all sorts of stuff going on there. Um, and but we should be talking about drawing, shouldn't we, really? And um, I am just, I'm going to go over to my um, overhead camera and I'm going to get some, phew, where are we? There we are. Overhead camera like that. You should be able to see me there. And I hope you can still hear me all right. <laughs> I, I have been moving cameras around and doing all sorts of stuff this week. So I'm sort of slightly nervous that it's, everything's going to be all right. And that's very jaggy JPEG around my, my circle there, isn't it? No, I need to do something there. So, um, do it this now. is not what we, we didn't come to talk about the, uh, the design of the <laughs> we'll talk about the technology later i i have I, no what i can do i can show you here uh can put it on there it's, it's not in that one so i can put a little um overlay here and i think i can just do that and add and look you can if i zoom that down a bit like that you can Send emails to me at question at wednesdaydrawingshow.com. And I have had one person has actually done that. And that is um, Pierre de Boer, who I'm not sure where Pierre, Netherlands, Netherlands. And, um, and Pierre was watching the, where I was drawing boxes the other day. And he said that he'd seen a little trick. A friend of his had showed him a little trick, which turns it very, very, even more three dimensional. Um, so, so <laughs> we've done a lot of boxes the last few weeks on the Wednesday drawing show. So there is a, a parallel. Well, it's not entirely parallel, is it? It, it could be more parallel. And oh, I have a new thing now. I have on my desk here a little button, and I can press that, and I can zoom wow. in. How smooth is that? Um, <laughs> so, um, and if we draw another, well, it's meant to be a parallelogram, but it's, yeah, it's it's, it's loose. It's a Lucy, Lucy yellow grab, anyway, something like that. And another line there. So we should have one, two, three parallel lines. One, two, three parallel lines. And one, two, three parallel lines. And Pierre said, someone just showed him a little trick, was if you draw another one like that. <gasps> um... Oh, it's just one little line, isn't it? And it turns it into an open box. 
which is you know makes it just so much more fun and i think for shading as well then if you assume the light's coming that way you can shade that way and you probably want to get a bit darker because you're getting down into the dark depths of the box like that and then you're going to want a bit of shade sort of coming down there as well and you know the edge of the table and that, that will be darker but again you have this kind of ambient light thing going on there so so you probably want to make that just slightly lighter going down there like that and maybe you could cross hatch that way and make it sort of go like that does that make sense mm -hmm. good <laughs> and and if you want to make it even more you can make it chunkier as well so if we draw that um the box thing like that and I'm, I'm 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 kind of feeling judy that everyone is watching this thing why is he drawing boxes what's this got to do with dogs do you know i was just going to ask it's <laughs> so quite a dog what's, what's this got to do with dogs it's got nothing to do with dogs at all um but I, i'm just clearing up this little issue which i feel i ought to do so well, the other thing you could do is to draw another little kind of parallelogram inside and then draw down like that which then kind of makes it you know into you know you get bricks like that don't you kind of hollow bricks and things like that and things like that and then whoosh, just move it over forward a bit more um if you were to draw your box like that and then you do your little trick whoosh, like that and then you draw another one like that oh. and maybe a little curve like that and you might want to draw something like that. And a little um, clown popping out with a spring. And, well, do you know, that was going to be my next thing. <laughs> You're way ahead of me, Judy. So if you had... Oh, you see, you're making me laugh. It's gone completely wobbly lines it's now. Very wobbly. It's, Crispin it's says wobbly boxers line. are dogs. Of course it's boxers going to be a boxer. Are... Oh. Be, oh no i have to draw a box oh, it? so um so we can draw um a boxer no i can't draw a boxer without thinking of, it's a bit like a boxer isn't it? Uh, uh, no <laughs> that's, a that's a terrible dog anyway so this is a jack in a box dog thing sort of going eh, 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 eh. so and then you if you put your little line down there but you could make it a bit thicker walled box like that and again you'd have your um Ooh. your lid springy back like that which might have some kind of dying 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 kind of moves and as it bounces open you probably need lots of shaky kind of motion kind of lines to go with it it's a bit angry so so we've gone from that, <laughs> yeah, if you're watching, <laughs> to that, to that, to, to that, which brings us, I suppose, on to dogs. Trail says that you five pounds because he's feeling even more better seeing us live. Oh, well, well thank you so pounds. much. Thank you, thank you so much. And I'm so, so glad you're feeling so much better. It's, um, it's been a hard time for lots of people, you know, not not mm. just those who've had COVID, I think, but if you've had COVID it, as well, it's it's not been good, has it? No, but I think, I, I hope I'm kind of, well, we have a roadmap here in the UK. <coughs> we have a roadmap out. <laughs> our our great leader, Boris Johnson, came on this week and said, I have a roadmap. He didn't actually hold it up, did he? Like, I think it was holding like, it up. Like, you know, coming down back down from Berlin with that piece of paper or anything. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, so, so apparently we have a roadmap out of COVID. So um, everything's going to be fine by June, apparently. Oh, we'll wait and see, I think. <laughs> so, as I say, you can, if you've got questions and things and you'd like to ask about drawing, anything about drawing, stuff like that, um, send it to me at question at wednesdaydrawingshow.com. And maybe next week I could, or the week after, whenever I get round to it, I could answer that. Now, you see, I'm not entirely prepared, so I just need to nip back up here and find the... So going to the dogs, going to the dogs, what, what's this all about? So, well, um, oh. Jack, Jack Russell in a box. 
Uh, Jack Russell. <laughs> so I, I, I'm going up to change the... I don't have to do that. I can zoom out like that. You see, there we are. Um, Good. Uh, this wow. is my book, Walker, the Boy Who Can Talk to Dogs. And this is... Um, <laughs> where is he? There isn't a picture of him. Where is he? He's the hero of the book. He should be in here somewhere. Uh, there he is. Here we are. This is Walker. And this isn't his dog. He, he's not allowed a dog um, because he's, his mum is allergic to dogs. And so he's not allowed a dog. But he has this brilliant idea and he starts a dog walking business. And so he walks Stella every day and he discovers he can actually talk to dogs. So this was the first book. And the second book is coming out. I, I, I haven't got any copies yet. So no. I, I thought, wouldn't it be fantastic if they arrived today and I could open them live? But unfortunately Ooh. not. So anyway, um, the the next book is due out on the 25th of March. And my publishers said to me, uh, it's a bit difficult marketing at the moment. <laughs> Have you got any ideas? <laughs> How can we build up some interest? So I thought what would be really good um, would be to say uh, every day during March on YouTube, I'm going to draw a dog and, and and it's going to be one of your dogs. I need to I need to look into this. It's going to be one of your dogs. There we are. And <laughs> what I want you to do is, oh, I have to actually go to my website and have a look and think, what do I want you to do? Um, <laughs> because I've got it all up there. If you go to my website, you will find a link in the description box below, which will take you to uh, the thing. And it's called Dogs of Influence. And I want you to, first of all, send me a picture of your dog. It doesn't actually have to be your dog. It could be your next door neighbor's dog. So a dog that you know, a dog you want to immortalize. <laughs> I don't suppose it probably actually does it have to be alive? I don't know. It could be a your favourite <laughs> dog when you were a child. If you've got the photographs and it's a fantasy and it's a memory, I suppose. Anyway, a good picture of your dog. And if you can send it in a JPEG less than 250 megabytes, that would be good. And the name of your dog, the current name of your dog. And then the fantasy name for your dog as a social media dog of influence. You may not be aware but <laughs> just like I'm, i'll come over to this uh, i'll come over to this you may not be aware but um on uh, on twitter and instagram and all those social media things there are dogs of influence some dogs have got millions of followers <laughs> and so um i'm kind of imagining some of these dogs coming together in a show in the next book that i'm going to write um which is it's all being plotted out at the moment and sort of getting there and still trying to still trying to convince my publishers it should be published as well so <laughs> they're not going to be able to say no now are they and uh and so i i have this vision that halfway through the book there's going to be this great big dog show with all these fancy pooches turning up um and your dog could be a character in the book and so during the month of March, up to the 25th, which is publication day, up to and including the 25th, then I will be drawing a dog every day and turning it into a character. Um, so what I also need to be able to turn it into a character, I need to know something about your dog. So in less than 200 words, I'd like you to tell me what is so special about your dog uh, that he... Uh, that, about your dog that he she will be invited to attend an imaginary dog show called dogs of influence <laughs> so which will give me kind of an idea because it's one thing having a picture but it's kind of the character as well and and this could be pure fantasy on your behalf well it really should be fantasy really uh, unless of course you already have a dog of influence and you already have a dog on Instagram with thousands and thousands of followers, in which case that would be quite interesting too. Uh, in which case you can help me promote the book through your channel as well. So, so, so that's uh, that's kind of how social media works really, isn't it? So does that make sense, Judy? Do you think people listening I to that I think will... it's a great idea. I've already sent a message to one of my ex-neighbours who... Okay. has a lovely dog called Roxy, who's the 
Great. greatest character. I have to tell you that the moment you started saying, send me a picture of your dog, my cat, who was sitting here quite happily listening, <laughs> jumped down and ran <laughs> off in disgust. <laughs> Well, the next book will have to have cats of influence in it. Yes. <laughs> Being a cat of influence. Dear, oh dear. So, uh, so that is where we are. Is it now? Have we got any comments about that so far? Uh, Gabriel is saying <laughs> dogs of influence. Well, nice. I can't even get my own wife to befriend me on Facebook or Twitter. <laughs> my dogs are more popular than I am. Oh, I'm I afraid that is. I need to take lessons from a dog that is how it goes <laughs> <laughs> and there we go good um yeah good so let's let's talk about maybe drawing dogs because they are tricky things and i need to move over to that one <laughs> we will get this we will get there won't we in the end uh, it'll get smoother and smooth. It's, it's not that unsmooth this week, is it? But it, it'll get smoother. It's fine. People like week a little bit of things going wrong. Do, do you think so? <laughs> well, I, I, I know I do. Makes it much I funnier. Video this morning. There's, yeah, if you if, actually, if you're all really interested in art and stuff and visual stuff, there's a, there's a. I get an email once a day from it's like an art magazine called Colossal. Um, I don't know. I can't think. What? Oh, and oh, I can't find it. And but anyway, so I they send me an email once a day, and sometimes there's an image. And I thought, oh, that's interesting. I go and have a look, and they sent me a thing just about a video. <laughs> it was just just the most crazy thing people doing stupid things and falling over and breaking things and it's just one accident after another and, and i think it was a telecoms company saying but of course you can rely on us <laughs> so um dogs uh i i, I think yeah the, i think the worst thing about a dog is is their back legs and um where, when i was doing another let me go and find there was another book i did um called which I'm really here we are um yeah the wolf saddle he'll definitely be in there um i did this quite some time ago called viking vic and all these um illustrations i did in flash in fact and there's a character here called um spot no he's not he's called fleck fleck which is the norwegian word for spot and i wanted to look a bit like a bandit so he has that kind of mask on, and he has his fleck. And, uh, and I thought, oh, I don't want to draw the back legs. And I did a lot of research into um, Viking, you know, designs at the time, because I just immersed myself in Viking stuff. And so fleck, he has basically, I always start with this circle. Let me, let me zoom in as I can. <laughs> And uh, I will start with this circle, which I imagine is kind of being the brain box um, of the the animal. And then a kind of a nose there. And then his eyes will be something like that with a mask sort of around it. And then, um, I don't know, what were his ears? His ears were kind of very forward, I seem to remember, if I remember rightly. Um, yes, that's right. So his ears kind of went forward like that. And he had a great big chunky collar as well with sort of studs. And there's a really weird thing about, you know, when you look at Viking art, there are, there are lots of these things going on, uh, lots of spirals. And, and I had to kind of unwind all these lines to work out what was going on with dragons and animals and things. And I worked out they were joints and it's like, the arm joints are on a spring and and these curls are basically <laughs> springs so um uh, oh look, which way does it go you see i haven't drawn for a very long time which way does it go yeah it's the back one so he has a paw go down there and then sort of around and up around like that it's, it's almost like a tattoo but wow. you can imagine that that is the sort of center point of the spring around which it kind of rotates and, and that's kind of I, I think that's kind of how the vikings kind of saw it but they do not like back legs vikings they do not like drawing back legs so 
I'm half Norwegian, so I'm a Viking, so I'm with them. <laughs> and so what they do is really, really simple. They just go straight down like that and straight down like that. And there's your back leg. Straight down. There's a the back leg. And then we go forward like that. And there's your front leg and a spot. And there's a Viking dog for you. So we could make that more um, obvious like that. And I always feel I should, in, what I need is a little foot pedal now, isn't it? A little foot button, a wah-wah pedal kind of thing just underneath the table. So while I'm doing this, I can just press the button and in will come the music. Do, 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 do. <laughs> the drawing music, well. <laughs> Because while you're drawing, then I said it many times, you know, that there's different bits of the brain working. And I can read out a the, few the comments. Language part, yeah, the language part Shall of I the brain. The yeah, that would be a really good idea. While you draw, we have a Abracadabra Fox saying hello. Glad I hello. finally got on the stream in time. Excellent. Octavia B says it's a very nice idea. Octavia says... I will definitely send you a picture of my very friendly dog who's jealous of my toddler and wants all my attention. <laughs> <laughs> Probably about the same size. Bobby's yeah. saying, Bobby's going to forward the recording of this to her niece. Oh, excellent. Good. Who has a dog called Scout who is amazing. Cool. Um, Joanne Hurd says, hello, Shu, I'm Philip from Doncaster. Philip, presumably, borrowing Joanna's... Yes, OK, you have to think twice about that for a moment. Uh, no, I understand that. Hi, Philip from Doncaster. <laughs> and Rob Reading, um, when Rob Reading said a spelling word, his dog moaned and didn't want to spell that. OK. Say again, I'll, I don't get that. No, I don't get that. Rob, you might have to... No. Uh, Rob's dog is barking and spitting in his face. Okay, right, oh, moving see. on. Good. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so here we are. Oh. Oh. And that's my little Viking dog. And so I kind of, I learned a lot from this back leg, I think, when I, when I did that. Um, and then, but this is a very two-dimensional kind of character, isn't it? And with, with the face and it's got both both eyes on one side of the face like he's a flounder or a flatfish or something like that um so when it comes to drawing dogs heads again then i i start with this circle and and i don't really do do this but i have done in the past uh, and i've sort of got it into my head so i don't need to do it if that makes sense and and actually, this goes, you know, last week somebody was saying, we've done these boxes and squares and cubes. You know, what about spheres? And this is where <laughs> spheres come in, I suppose, as well. So I could maybe talk more about spheres another day. So, but this is basically a sphere, if you're kind of thinking a bit like that. Um, and again, that is the, the brain box onto which a dog has a snout. So, um, so we can kind of build a box onto the front of the dog. So it's the box that we've just been <laughs> doing last week. And there's the box on the front of, it's stuck on a sphere. And we're gonna have, you know, maybe, actually maybe the eyes will be a bit lower down there. And the nose will be sort of there. And we maybe, we can sort of shape that box a bit so that it sort of comes up more like that. And We've got that little line underneath the nose, haven't we? And then we can bring the lower jaw down like that. Actually, let's put the eyeballs in, which gives us a bit of character. And then any number of ears that you could have. So you could just have sort of little ears going up like that. You know, you can have them coming down. Um, and then that's the wonderful thing about dogs, is they come in all sorts of different shapes, don't they? <laughs> so, but you're basically going to want um, a little bit of a neck and 
and a, a, a collar and a little thing to tell you who it who it is, and and then, and then a kind of a sort of a a beanie kind of shape like that. But again, this is this is a three D thing. So this, I'm thinking of this going back to your um your kayaks, Judy. <laughs> oh gosh, yes. <laughs> you know, it's a similar kind of thing. So you know, a, a kayak with the hole in the top is is sort of oh that like that disappearing and... behind the Judy cam. Is it? Oh, sorry. Yes, yeah, sorry. There we are. And. Yeah, let me do that again. So, yeah, so you know, a kayak is this kind of long thing with a little hole in the middle, um, and it's got a, you know a central line like that. And if you can see inside it, then it's you know it's kind of like that, and a line down on the bottom, and and it's basically built up of lots of sort of different sized ellipses on the inside, which is what we kind of got here as well. And it's built up inside really there. Helps thinking of that. Um, and then we can think about where, you know, if it's alert, then its legs going to be going sort of slightly back like that. And I think <laughs> maybe a bit more there. And their their leg, their I hate drawing dogs' legs and feet. I'll never get them right. And I th I think you need I think I think to really get into doing something, you need to spend a good week drawing nothing but. And really, really mm. analysing what goes on, um, to uh, and drawing it hundreds of times to kind of see, and then it it's that muscle memory and the, the you know it's a whole memory thing goes on, doesn't it? And and, and there's a little something like that goes on in the <laughs> dog's front leg, and and then the paws as well. So uh, let me let me do that, which means we can hide one paw behind. <laughs> <laughs> They could always um, be in long grass. It could be in the long grass. That's that's another thing. Yeah. Oh, oh look, there happens to be a wall in front. It's just going past this wall. Um, and then we can have a tail or some description like that. And then the back leg is. is oh, I hate. I hate it. But you've got the hips there. Right? So this is what's you've going got on. To do this every day for a month. Are you sure? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but the. Yeah. You're going to well, I, I should be quite good at it by the end of the month, yeah. then, shouldn't I? <laughs> so basically, you've got the hip joint, and then and then the femur is really quite short, and it's almost still in the body. That is the femur, isn't it? And then or whatever it is, then that sort of comes out there um, to the ankle. Everything is not what you think it is in a four-legged creature. So this is the ankle down here, and then you get the foot, and then the toe at the bottom. So you get this kind of sort of weird thing that oh, goes yeah. like that, and this is the dog leg that we know all know and love and hate to draw. Yeah. And then you sort of get that curve around there, and then you're going to get the toe in there. There's usually a little something there as well, and and then similarly you're going to get sort of a, the paw coming in like that that's a very fat dog isn't it so let's let's get this chest that's sort of more let's make it more slim yeah and then a, there's going to be a little bit of shoulder and then it'll sort of go down into the back of it and then up into the rump and, and now it's looking a bit skinny isn't it but there we go and and that's kind of the construction of a dog and and then it's kind of creating a character from that is is the next thing you know and so this is this is where i'll be wanting you <laughs> to, to feed me <laughs> feed me with inspiration with photographs and descriptions and things because um you know we get oh i'm trying to think you know so if you know starting with that sort of basic kind of thing that's going on there we can extend the nose the, the snout rather way out there and and when it starts to come into character then you know I find a lot goes into the eyes and how they look at you how they connect with you and things and and um, so we can maybe have you know this would be more kind of Afghan 
um, we never really get to see the ears, do we? Because they're all uh, <laughs> just dangling. <laughs> and and then you can have this incredibly long snout, or maybe even longer there. And, and that would be kind of a happy, happy Afghan. <laughs> it's just going to be, just, yeah. It's just going to be a great sort of mess of, in fact, you could just hide everything. You don't need to draw the legs at all. So maybe, maybe a bit of a tail. Uh, but then there'd also be another. Oh, you'd have to have more ear in there, and you'd have to have, um, sort of, a, a competing Afghan who would be really snooty. Actually, they'd have their nose up in the air, wouldn't they? So you'd have to kind of think differently. And this is where this is where the sphere comes into into play. So. Um, you know, if we think so, it's got got their nose up in the air, so their little box will be built on like that, and there'll be something like that with the nose there, and you might not see much of that eye, but we can sort of bring the nose there, and um, oh, I'd have to really think about an expression on here. I don't. That doesn't quite look right, does it? We need a really supercilious kind of... Mm, something like that. Um, and that one would just be kind of more... Sort of, yeah. Oh, I'm not... Uh, yes. Are you Sylvie Quinn, actually? <laughs> something like that. Uh, which would be a much, much more... Um, yeah, a, a, a different kind of character, isn't it? So this is your kind of friendly, self-assured, friendly one. Yeah, very self-assured, and and this is where the the sphere really comes in. And 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 I'm often asked, you know, how how do you draw characters from different angles? And I, I and I've drawn this so many times, shown it so many times, but I think you can <laughs> you can always show it again. And so, you know, if if you kind of think of the dog there, and I think this is something that. Um, this is kind of an an image that people do quite often. It's kind of like a teddy bear as well, isn't it? You know, but if you mm. have um, so uh, uh, it, it's a kind of a standard kind of thing is to have that sort of the nose there and then this sort of circle around the snout. Um, it's a standard kind of cartoony kind of sort of dog layout, as it were. Um, and then the ears on top. But if you then think about what it's, going on then you've got a line down the middle and a line about there and it's basically it's a sphere so if you want to build this up as a character um, then you can do that and then this side this edge this circumference here is now going to be a curve around like that and this straight line will now be curved there and you can see that we're going to have a um, uh, no, that's sort of going to come across there so it needs to come down a little bit so we've got our snout like that and that's the centre line so that this this eye which is now a circle will be about there but it's going to be an ellipse because it's going to be squashed in a bit this is squashed in even more on the other side so that would be an ellipse and we can have a little there and then the ears are going to be attached onto that <laughs> onto what was the the edge of, of this one like that and and that's going to be oop, the dog you know so that's going to have um, you know however it's going to look so this should sort of look like that one <laughs> and and the more you know, you're not going to get it right the first time. You have to sort of keep keep drawing and drawing and and, and getting so to how, know the how character. How would you how would you draw the long nose front on? I, just like that, really. I think. Oh, okay. um, well, so if yeah. we thought of if we think that we got a um, what are they called again? I forgot. <laughs> What's this brain called? What did I call Afghan? <laughs> Um, I think maybe you could maybe not have 
this line so much and you could maybe make it kind of longer by um mm -hmm. sort of doing that and in doing that you, you kind of lengthen the nose but you're also then making this different to that and yeah uh, and all these lines are what i i don't know if it's an official thing but i've always called them character identifiers um and it's the way you draw it that the next time you draw it, if you draw it the same way and you use the same line, so you might like, uh, it's like this spot is always there, this mask is always there, you know, it's, they've always got this, the, this curl, those are character identifiers, so you go, oh yeah, that's that dog. Um, so you might want to have, uh, I don't know, s something, so you might have some special collar or something like that as a as a definite character identifier um, to help you know I'm, I'm an illustrator so you know I'm always trying to tell stories and it's so it's the person who's reading the story and it doesn't matter if it's a children's book or a magazine you know whatever but you're, you're trying to tell a story with with your pictures and especially if you're doing sequential art in a comic and you're going to have that character appearing page after page after page People need to know, oh, it's that character, and they need to be able to just recognise that character instantly. Um, and and so quite often, you will just you will just have um, that that sort of you know sort of straight on look, and you'll work out a three quarter, and and then and, and a side view as well, and and so if you give him a little hat, this person. Um, and, and quite often that that is pretty much all you need to to do uh, to, to kind very of get, often to, to get a f in, in comics people um, human characters wear the same yeah. clothes don't they all the time yes yeah so that identifies and, and I find that something. really boring as, as an illustrator I find it really boring <laughs> I was sort of sort of <laughs> give them new clothes so sometimes in a new book i might give them you know, new, new new jumper or something yeah. but, but if you think like fred flintstone he you know he wore that same outfit yeah. for, well for the whole yeah. of prehistory didn't he really? <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, um, you know super mario brothers they, they, they've been you know wearing that hat, hat outfit for however long so yes and and then from that you know whole whole enormous businesses business empires are built you know with t-shirts and uh, mugs and coffee and everything oh, with oh. those characters and if you get a character that people love then they want them on their their mugs and t-shirts and things as well talking of computer games and things last oh. week do you remember i was telling you about that game i used to play when i was much much younger on my amstrad cpc 464 and it was actually called Sorcery, I've discovered. I've been looking it up. I can show you a bit of it. Because I found it. I, I, mm, anyway, I, I kind of ripped it off somebody. <laughs> Here, have a look. You won't tell. Yeah, this is, yeah, and look, there's a little sorcerer, yeah. the wizard. And this was the really difficult bit. Oh, yeah, going through there. And because <laughs> I always used to fall in the water then. And oh it was so difficult and, and then that ghost would always try to catch you and you'd be oh do 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 and yeah and it's it's like i'm there again it really is <laughs> it's so sad <clears throat> and and that's about all you really need to do and it just went on and on and on you see every time you got water like on that yeah yeah i did i that's enough that's quite enough for that so um <laughs> So I got a little obsessed with that game, and um, so this must have been about 1986, 87 or something. <laughs> and um, and then I, well, you know, one night I kind of went to bed, and I could see the whole thing playing on the inside of my eyelids, and I thought, "This is <laughs> no, too much. This is not right." I think I've been playing for about ten hours solid or something. I thought this is not good, and I sold my Amstrad CPC 464. And I bought a Smith Corona dedicated word processor. It looked like a typewriter, but it had a little screen and you could type the words in and edit as you went along. And, and, there, weren't any games. and there weren't any games. And it had a daisy wheel, so it did this beautiful, lovely typing on it and things like that. Yeah. 
So, um, and, and I've never really played a computer game since. I certainly have never completed one. And I don't really play them much at all. So, yeah. How are we doing in the... Oh, Karina is scared of dogs. Some mm. comments. <laughs> Octavia says a show about ellipses and spheres would be very useful for understanding shapes in 3D. Yeah, I think we, we will come round to that, yeah. Lawrence and has joined us. Yeah. Karen McMillan says, I looked up dog skeletons the other day and had to compare to my dog to confirm because the pet leg structure is so weird. It is, isn't it? And and um, I think every time I come to draw an animal, I have to kind of reset my mind and, and remember that, you know, where it, that is not an elbow. That is an ankle or that, not a, no elbow. It isn't. A, the elbows are usually the wrists. And what you think is a knee is, in fact, a, a, an ankle. Yeah, it's kind of weird, isn't it? And what else do we have? Ab Abacadova Fox says, Oh, drawing the same thing from different angles is the hardest. Yes. <laughs> and I'll, Karen also says, Do I ever draw digitally? Well, I did do that with, uh, with, with this. And uh, I can... <laughs> Isn't that amazing? I can just do that. <laughs> um, and and I think, yeah, so kind of in this, when was this published? I can tell you. Uh, originally 2009, yeah, uh, 2008, 2009. But I think in the um, early 2000s or something, um, I, I've been doing a lot of flash, um, which is, uh, which was, <laughs> it's now called Adobe Animator, I think. Uh, I've been doing a lot of uh, Flash, which was a way of doing animations on the internet. And it made really small files, which were, it was important to have tiny files on the internet in the early days, because everything took so long to stream. And you could do animations in, in very small files. And then one day I was looking and I went to export or something, and I saw it said export to JPEG. And I thought, OK, click that, see what happens. And sure enough, it exported my image as a 300 DPI uh, image, which is what I needed for printing. And I thought, whoa. And so I started playing with it, uh, uh, in, with thinking about doing uh, illustrations. And that my first thing was actually Ricky Rocket, if I can find that quickly. <laughs> Um, talk amongst yourself. Talk amongst yourself. <laughs> <laughs> um, Ricky Rocket, where is I should have. Oh, I can't see. No. Karen's oh, also asking Ricky if you're Rocket. going to voice all your March dogs. <laughs> I probably have to come up with a voice, won't I? <laughs> so, yeah. so this is Ricky Rocket was my. Oh, if I come over to. Uh, there we are. This was the first one that I did. Um, in flash and all the lines are very very similar the very all the same sort of thickness um, and I had a lot of fun doing that and the thing about um, flash is that basically you're building puppets uh, so so each character um, you draw the arms separately and and then you can go in and you can move the arms about at different angles and you can change hands and so essentially they were kind of puppets and by the time I got to the end of a book I sort of built up these these characters with lots of different arms and things and and I wasn't drawing anymore I was just kind of like right I'll have that body mm. this head and that thing and move the eyes over here and it kind of got a bit boring and then my publishers asked me if I would maybe not have just these simple like these are actually quite simple aren't they but but like in the background here it's getting a bit more uh interesting they wanted me to have a more interesting line uh so i did these which are the uh, the just so stories rudyard kipling's just so stories and you can see here the line is much more varied which which is quite hard work in flash um but again yeah and and, and again, each book was um, starting from scratch with new characters whereas these I was doing eight books in a series so by the end of the series it really was just picking things out, mm -hmm. of, out of the library 
So this is more interesting because I'd have to start from scratch each time um, and sort of create different characters. Uh, and then I just got really bored with it. Um, so <laughs> and I thought, I, I want to draw again. And, uh, and, and I did. And, and I just kind of gave up doing digital work. And, and it, I, I think what, what really got to me was these. Look, you know, I did eight of those, eight of those, eight of those. There's another series. Well, one's eight, two, three, 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 four, sort of 30, 30, 40 books or something. I've got no artwork to show for it. You didn't it's do artwork to start with, or I've got all these kind of roughs. Yes, there's there's lots of roughs, but but there's nothing to hold. Hmm. And and I think if you've been brought up as a digital native, you know maybe that doesn't matter to you so much. But uh, I like to I like to know that I've got this artwork. You know, <laughs> so up in my attic, I've got you know I don't know artwork for well if that's about. 40 so i've got about 200 and something books 200 plus books worth of artwork up in my attic which i don't know what to do with so i think one day i will kind of leave them to a, um, a museum uh, university a museum. or a museum and the children's book museum or something like that i don't know we'll see what happens one day my children might say no we want them mm. I can't, I don't know, they'd probably say, no, burn it. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> so, how are we doing on the uh, on the old chat here? Chris, Crispin's else? asking, do your publishers ever ask you to draw stuff differently from how you would usually? <sighs> mm, I'll just come over here a bit. Um, no. Um, I, I think the thing is i know look on, on saturday hey i tell you what i'm just going to press a button for a moment and i'll come back and there's a reason why if you enjoy these shows and you'd like to buy me a cup of coffee to keep me going head on over to patreon.com slash shoe where you will find all the details of how you can support this channel in the meantime on with the show Indeed, on with the show. Now, you were with me on, on, on Saturday on Patreon, weren't you, Judy? Uh, I was, um, it was good. And we, well, mine we had them an, on the morning session. Yeah, morning session. I'm not a morning yeah, and so, so more, you're a morning person. So, uh, on, on Patreon, <laughs> sort of twice a month, then we get together on Zoom and I do a tutorial. So it's, sort of quite, it's quite a long session, isn't it? And um, we Ooh. were doing, uh, well, you know, we were doing, let me go there. You know, we were doing, I did a dinosaur thing last week. And so I did that. And, and I thought we will go back to this <laughs> building sheds and square boxes and things like that. And I thought I'd put the two things together and we'd have a dinosaur ripping the roof off a shed. So then I had to do a little practice. Uh, that's the one we did in the afternoon, I think. So we did these, I've done these various versions. I've forgotten why we were talking about this. Um, <laughs> changing style that was what we were talking about uh that was crispin and um so we were actually discussing this about um style i think it I think, yeah i think so wasn't it I, uh, karina will go yes <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i think because yeah, i think yeah. i was talking about this with karina and um uh, uh, there are times when a, a publisher asks me to do something and you start working on it, you think, I can't do this, I'm not worthy and I haven't got the skills to do this and I'm rubbish and, and it doesn't matter how professional you are, it doesn't matter how many years you've been doing it, you will still have these moments of doubt. And, um, and whenever I get those moments of doubt, then I think to myself, what? why have they asked me to do this? And it's because they know what I do and, and they've seen my portfolio and, um, and th th they've seen something that they like. So I have to tell myself, my publishers want me to do what I do because they like what I do <laughs> and that's what they want. And what the publishers really don't want is for you to think, ah, oh, I've got a wonderful new way of drawing this <laughs> because you're going to turn up, you're going to deliver something that isn't what they wanted it it might be 
even better but it might be something completely uncommercial and this quite often happens um publishers try to keep uh, illustrators and authors apart <laughs> so, so the author will write the story and then, and then the, the the publishers will then go to the illustrator and say you know what, what do you think of this story and then the illustrator will send it in and then they will send those sketches to the to the author and then it goes backwards and forwards um, because once the author and the illustrator get together they start getting a bit artistic <laughs> and um and then that's when it all goes wrong because hey wouldn't it be great if we did this wouldn't it be great if we did that uh, whereas the publisher originally went okay the, we can see where this, how, what this book could look like and we can sell that and then if if the author and the illustrator come up with something really arty then they go oh, no this is not going to be you're not going to be able to sell this so most of the time no publishers don't ask you to change things but sometimes they might say oh we we particularly like that kind of thing that you did in that book you know that kind of style and if you could do it that way um then that's then then maybe they might say that because obviously you know i mean the my digital kind of thing is completely different to to, to the watercolor mm. kind of things and sometimes they say could you maybe make it a bit looser rather than tighter so you know that's what we'll so presumably do, they yeah. wouldn't ask you to do something that is is obviously drawn digitally. They'd know that nowadays your your style is very different. I I I, I think so. Yeah, but I I mean I think I I'm, I'm kind of on you and you know I I I've just become a YouTube person now, so I just do what I like really. <laughs> 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 and and I illustrate my own books mostly, so I don't really mm. illustrate anybody else's anymore. And I'm not really, I don't think I'm really thought of in the business as a, as an illustrator anymore, and more more as an author. And oh, oh yeah, he does the drawings as well, you know, and that's kind of incidental. So uh, it's very well, I it's, it's, it's extremely rare. That nobody asked me to illustrate anymore, but then of course what i really should do is get a portfolio together and go out and start selling myself as an illustrator but you know i'm quite busy doing this so the wednesday drawing show um, yeah oh hang on i've lost there what was, was a, a comment i was going to read karen karen h has said i'm not going to lie i wasn't aware of you until last week mr rayner just ah. investigating your books and uh -huh. Karen's going to be purchasing for her SEN daughter, who's 24, Excellent. for independent reading. She says they look Excellent. fab. So yeah, I, th I think that independent reading is kind of what, uh, you know, the kind of things that I did. So I've, off, I've always, uh, you know, been writing kind of books for, for, for uh, and series books. Um, mm. So, the, the, you know, I always write sort of series books um, for kids who just kind of got that uh, just just really just started reading independently and and having found one book that they like they want something similar and and they can sort of get their teeth into sort of eight <laughs> at a time so quite often you know you'll, you'll find children that they'll find a series that they like in you know school and and um they'll they'll shove it in their backpack take it home read it read it in one go because they're kind of you know re reading one session kind of books and they'll come back the next day i want another one like that and mm. so they go along with the next one in the series the next time i can see we've got nikki here hi who is <laughs> woken up in new zealand <laughs> uh do do i he says do i manipulate my actual drawings digitally very much i i do quite a bit um and uh, oh, way back in the 90s um the first scanner that I bought came with a free copy of Photoshop LE or something. No, it wasn't it. I think it was the full Photoshop. I can't remember. And um, and you know, it was just amazing what you could do. And so there was. Oh, I'll find it. <laughs> <laughs> so there's this series here called. Um, uh, where do we want to be? The Rex Files, um, and these were all painted digitally in in gray tones and i did sort of all sorts of things in that 
because I could. Oh, I trod on my glasses today, so they gone very funny. Um, so here, uh, this is Frankie, uh, and he's in focus. I don't know if you can see. I can zoom in. <laughs> so he's in focus, and then uh, Rex in the background. I just kind of blurred him a bit to make it more in the background. And then I kind of put these little speed lines on there. Um, and again, I did lots of this blurring thing. So, um, and that's all very blurred in the background. So trying to give a feeling of distance. Um, uh, and yeah, yeah, yes. So I, I, I do, and today I still do. So if I was sort of scanning this one here, for instance, I might, I, you know, I could think, oh, I haven't quite got the eye right. And I could just take the mm -hmm. little eyeball out and just move it fractionally so that I've got the, you know, the connection between the characters, uh, little things like that. And I might suddenly go, oh, I don't like that, you know, that, I don't like that tiny bit <laughs> on the tooth, <laughs> you know, sort of maybe erase that out and just, it's just very tweaking. useful to be tweaking. able to do that, isn't it? And if you it go is. over the lines a little bit, you know, you yeah. can tidy it up. Absolutely. And, and uh, I, I've recently upgraded my scanner now, so um, the, I'm getting such better scans um, that I feel I can really do that. And, and, and you know, and they're, they're, they really are print ready then. Um, whereas my previous scanner, now I realise how it wasn't quite as good as I thought it was. <laughs> <laughs> so how are we doing anymore? Um, Bobby says, so glad she was a self-published author writer. If you have an argument with an author or the illustrator, they are both you. <laughs> yes, I think that's that's an interesting thing because um, the, this book here, I have a publisher and, um, I, and I have my editor, Janet, and, um, and it's good that I do. Uh, because you know I write the story and I send it to her and then and I think I've done a wonderful job and she comes back and goes ah, marvellous fantastic you know, how about if you were to change this <laughs> and um and the story improves and it always improves with an editor and and it's it's very difficult if you are self-publishing um to to really get that so I, I, self-publishing becomes a different kind of thing and, and I think it is much more uh, a, a much more personal kind of work of art kind of thing whereas with a publisher um, they're they're investing money in it and they want uh, they want to return on their <laughs> on their investment and so you know you're I, I always say that the editor's job is 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 to be the champion of the reader and uh, and once you've written your first draft and you've got that thing out it's not yours anymore it, it's it's not for you as the author it's you've written it for the reader <laughs> that is the whole point and you've got to kind of transfer everything over into the reader experience and um and uh, I know some people will get quite uh, tense when a, when an editor will suggest things. Whereas I'm I'm always really open to to editorial suggestions because I know it's about making the book better. And sometimes I think, oh, pish, push, push. No, I know, no, that's completely wrong. And then I'll sleep on it and I go, well, actually, and think, well, actually, that is a really good point. And if we add this bit and then add that bit, and then the whole thing becomes you know even better again because you're sort of discussing it and they'll come back well too much or too little or maybe yeah what then if you do that and and so so it sort of grows and improves and um oh <laughs> stuff going on judy <laughs> i'll come over to this so um yeah so um it's, it's a very different thing if you are, are, are self-publishing and and it is possible to get sort of lost down rabbit holes if you're self-publishing too i think so uh what else have we got um nikki campbell says do you have any full color books yes quite a few i start when i started out i used to do a lot of full color books and that's what i kind of how i started out really uh Arturo, is the black and white thing about the cost of the book my sister wrote a children's book and i'd like to illustrate it and maybe have it published indeed it's all about the cost 
Uh, are you back, Judy? I'm back. Sorry. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. Um, uh, but black and white publishing is, is indeed all about the cost and it, it, it's, it's quite a lot cheaper, especially if you're self-publishing um, uh, and because you can really sort of see what the costs are if, if you're doing it um, like in Kindle or something like that. And uh, because you're only having to print it once, it black, where, whereas if you're printing in full colour, you've got the black and the cyan and the magenta and yellow so you've got four printers going so it's, it's, it's not actually four times the price but it, it's a lot more expensive printing in color um and and so for you know little books which are going to get read um you know overnight um and maybe only ever get read once whereas picture books tend to get read again and again and again you know the favorite mm. picture book does um and uh so a black and white book is much much more disposable i suppose like that and and also they're a bridge between a color picture book and um and starting to read novels um so you're getting much more words in them but you've still got the illustrations to help you through because you're still learning to read and you're still learning to sort of decode what is going on in that story um, and the pictures kind of help you decode. And then as you get that bit older, you can start leaving the illustrations behind and just go straight into the uh, into the words because you've kind of built up those reading skills and, you know, how to decode all those words. And Delete what else do you have? is asking what scanner have you got now? I have got an Epson Perfection V800 photo dual lens system. Boom, boom, boom. <laughs> it is. It is. The first scan I did, it was like, oh, wow. Okay, I see the difference. <laughs> dear, oh dear. Uh, do you share your. Uh, Paul, Paul, Paul Powell says, what kind of legitimacy have an editor compared to other readers? That's, uh, yeah. Um, uh, an editor, you see, the thing is with a publisher, a publisher says, we would like to, um, we would like to publish your book. And which means that they're going to invest some money in 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 you as the author and and as in the illustrations in the creating the book all the marketing distribution so that you know they're going to be investing a fair amount of money and they're also paying the wages of, of all their employees at the same time so there's a lot of money involved um and the editor's job is to it's like herding cats really and <laughs> the editor's job is to get actually sort of crack the whip and make sure that the author writes the book on time because they have maybe booked the printers two years ahead uh, <laughs> saying we want this book published by the because they've told the world this book is going to be published on such and such a date two years time there is a schedule to be met and so one thing is that, that they'll be nagging the author to get the book written on time uh, so that then that can go to the illustrator and then they'll be nagging the illustrator to get it done on time. And the publisher, when they buy the book and agree that they're going to publish it, they have an idea in their mind of what that book is going to look like. And they've talked about it and they said, we think we can sell this book and make a profit uh, and hopefully make even more profit if it becomes really popular but they they think you know if there's a minimum that they can sell and they will make a profit and so they will commit to this book um and so the editor they want to create that book and so so the author does all the creativity stuff but the but the, the editor has to kind of make sure that it all then gets shaped into that commercial <laughs> package that can be sold does that make sense mm -hmm. and and so um editors are generally sort of passionate readers and quite often writers themselves um and 
but they're passionate readers and, and they kind of know what makes a good book. And while you are writing, you have your, you're just completely blinkered and you've got your nose up against the screen and you, you think you've written something fantastic. And, yeah. and it's the editor's job then is to reshape it into that thing that you thought you'd written. Uh, and to throw these bits out and to bring those bits over here and move that there uh, because that that's basically what you'd intended to do when you sat down to write but because you're so close to it you you can't see that maybe you need to make those changes uh, and when an editor points them out usually you go ah oh, yes I meant to do that or whatever you know and mm. or they'll say you know this bit just doesn't quite work with that bit and you'll go, oh, yeah, no, I thought I'd done that. And and in your mind, you thought you'd made that connection, but you haven't made it clear for the reader. And that's what the editor is trying to do is to make all, all those connections absolutely clear, uh, uh, you know, for the reader so that they can read it properly. This is the Wednesday Drawing Show. We're not talking about drawing at all, are we? Um, yeah. Nikki's asking um, how much time did you have to dedicate to marketing? Sorry, that no, taking off drawing again. Uh, you don't really have any time to dedicate. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I did this kind of business course thing, a year long business course of two, three years ago. And um, and the big guy who's kind of in charge, he sort of said, so what do you do? What do you and he was very into assets and what have you got? And, you know, and what, what have you done? And I said, well, I've, you know, I've written like 200 books and have illustrated. And he went, oh, <laughs> he said, are these all published? Oh, yeah. Who buy? I said, oh, you know, Penguin and Harder and all these big companies. He said, so what are you doing now? I said, oh, I'm writing this new book. And he said, why? He said, you've got all these assets. You should be milking your assets. You know what he said? What is it with you creative people that you have to keep creating new stuff? Oh. You know, you you you've done a lifetime's worth of work. You could just spend your time, uh, you know, exploiting it. Uh, and and it's a it's just a thing. If you're a creative, you just have to keep on creating. <laughs> it's, it's just what you do, isn't it? <laughs> so and and so that means basically, you know, as, as soon as you finish one book, you want to get on to the next thing. And there's never any time for marketing. Um, whereas my great leader was told me, you know, forget, forget all that creating and just get out and market the stuff that you've That's done. <laughs> Dear. So, well, I think, I think, well, well, we, yeah, we're 10, an hour and 10 minutes. So I think perhaps we ought to, uh, I'll just say, um, oh, that on your... very quickly while you are watching this, look for a subscribe button and click it and then click the little bell that pops up and then click the word all and then you will be notified next time I have a live stream coming up because you'd much rather be watching this live than watching it afterwards. Go on, make sure you are subscribed to the Shoe Rainer Live drawing channel. Oh, I forgot to press the button. Here I am. <laughs> there you are. <laughs> so, um, yeah, and I, I think we probably sort of probably need to start wrapping up um but do if if you want to have your dog immortalized in print and and i thought also then because it's gonna <laughs> if it becomes a book it'll take you know a year and more before it ever comes out so i thought once i got all these dogs together i'll make a poster because now if you look down there you will see i now have a youtube shop um you can get my book um everyone can draw which you can get for free if you join up with patreon and um uh, and you can come on zoom meetings all sorts of stuff oh everything happens on patreon um and oh, what were we talking about i got carried away the thought of doing zoom meetings um <laughs> hi clay i can see clay's on there uh clay joins us clay comes along and joins us for um uh, for zoom meetings and things like that and well karen says why are there so many mugs on the wall behind you 
Oh, I see. The drawings. <laughs> oh, what? there. Drawings of mugs. Let me go to the main. <laughs> let me go to that screen. There's, are there even more? Yes. Look. Oh. And they're they're not. They're jugs. Um, and there are so many on there because I did recently a video on how to draw a milk jug. And I thought that'll be nice and easy. That'll only take me five minutes to do. <laughs> so I did a quick little sketch and I went, oh, that doesn't quite look right. And, and I was just drawing what I thought a milk jug looked like. And there's a whole lot more actually in my sketchbook as well. <laughs> I just had to draw it again and again and again and again until I was happy. And then I made my how to draw a milk jug video. Practice, <laughs> practice, practice, practice. It doesn't matter how many years you've been doing it, you can still practice and get better. <laughs> so, uh, Paul says, publishers are not so talented to create book. The market is saturated and creators are their milk. How to get away from the bankrupt. It's new, it's not quite that simple. It's not quite that simple um and it's yeah no it's just not quite that simple <laughs> paul says crowdfunding does a better job for creators yeah it does but again that's all about marketing and and crowdfunding is a really difficult thing to do and whatever happens when you make a book making the book is the easy part selling it and marketing is the really really difficult bit and the people who do well on Kickstarter and, and on, on all those kind of things actually come, are usually marketeers who think, oh, I could write a book. Mm -hmm. And they do, and, and they do really well because they know how to market it. Whereas people who, who, who are sort of creatives and just want to write a book to, to, to tell the world about you know, their feelings or whatever and to paint those wonderful pictures, they're usually rubbish at marketing and, and and sell 30 copies, which is really, really sad. And so quite often it's it's the really beautiful things that don't sell. And it's it's the kind of rubbish stuff which gets knocked out by marketers that sells really well. But it was ever thus. Um, there we are. Uh, Nikki says, where do you send the dog influencer pick? If you look in the comments box below, there is a um there is a link on there and it is dogs of influence at <laughs> she read a drawing dot com i think <laughs> I, I did didn't i yeah i yeah. just have to find it now um was it was it was it the on this one did i have it so uh question questions oh that was questions wasn't it um it's i'm pretty sure it's oh hang on a minute <laughs> <laughs> this this is so exciting isn't it um I have written it down uh, like dogs. It. Uh, um i new post Music. dogs of influence let me go to that and then i can send myself an email and then i'll know <laughs> If you go to, yeah, if, if you click the link below, it will take you to my website where you will find there is a link which will bring up an email. And if I copy that and I go copy the address, I can come back to here. No, where I can come back to here. <laughs> this is, this is just so interactive. And I need to do that, and then I put a new thing in there, and then I'll go. Oh, okay, put all that there, and I put all that there, and da da. Yes. You can't quite see that, can you? So if I turn that into, um, I'm going to turn that into. Why can't I do that? Yeah, let me do that. I'm going to make that yellow. How about that? There we are. Dogs of influence at shoerenderdrawing.com. <laughs> That's what you need to do. And Judy, I think we are going to have to wrap up. I think we I are. See Mrs. Rayner is to... sort of, Mrs. Rayner is calling me for something. Oh, I've got to ring that and... person back who I okay. press the button on. <laughs> Lovely to see you, Judy. Lovely to see everybody else. Thank you for coming along and joining us on the Wednesday Joining Show. We will be back. We, yes. we shall Thank return. You. We will be back From next week. Box. And oh, I'm losing all sorts of things. There's, oh, I've got so many windows open. I don't know where I am. Um, <laughs> thank you very much for watching. Uh, if I go like that, we still see Judy. No, that's the wrong oh, one. We where are we? There we are. Judy Cam. <laughs> <Yay. laughs>
<laughs> thanks for all your help judy and uh we'll see everybody next week everybody and next i'm going to press that button and say bye well thank you so much for watching and make sure you click that little subscribe button and when you do ring the bell so that you get notifications of when i am gonna go live next you can come along and join in and bring your ideas as well in the meantime stay safe keep well and keep drawing 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 practice 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 and i'll see you next time you take care now bye bye